Welcome to American Celebs Tribute House of Memory, where we gather to honor the unforgettable stars of American entertainment. Here we keep you updated on the latest news about our beloved actors and actresses. Whether they passed away today, yesterday, or recently, we reflect on their incredible contributions to the world of entertainment. Join us as we delve into the stories of these legendary figures, celebrating their legacies and ensuring their memories live on. Stay tuned for updates on the departures of famous celebrities in 2023 and 2024. Today we will find the cause of death of 29 beloved actors and actresses. Look back together over the years with memorable memories of the lives of our beloved characters. Camar de los Reyes, One Life to Live and Call of Duty actor, dies at the age of 56. Camar de los Reyes, who starred in the long-running daytime series, One Life to Live, and multiple installments of the Call of Duty video game franchise has died. He was 56. Lisa Goldberg, a publicist for the actor's wife, Sherry Saum, confirmed De Los Reyes' death in a statement shared with the Associated Press. He died Sunday in Los Angeles following a brief battle with cancer. Camar De Los Reyes was a highly respected and versatile actor whose career spanned across film, television, and theater. Born on November 8, 1967, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, he was raised in Las Cruces, New Mexico. De Los Reyes' multicultural background with roots in both Puerto Rico and the United States influenced his diverse acting style and range. His breakthrough came in the early 1990s with his role as Antonio Vega on the daytime soap opera One Life to Live. Portraying a character dealing with complex issues of race, family, and identity, he garnered widespread recognition and critical acclaim. Following his success on the soap opera, De Los Reyes continued to impress audiences with his performances in various television series such as CSI, Miami, 24, and Sleepy Hollow, as well as notable films including The Ministers and The Archer. Throughout his career, De Los Reyes received nominations for awards such as Soap Opera Digest Awards and NAACP Image Awards for his portrayal of Antonio Vega. Despite not receiving major awards, his contributions to the entertainment industry were appreciated by audiences and critics alike. Beyond his professional achievements, Camar de los Reyes maintained a private personal life, preferring to keep details about his family and relationships out of the public eye. However, he was known for his philanthropic efforts, supporting various charitable causes and advocating for social issues. Camar de los Reyes was a talented and respected actor whose passion for his craft left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. His diverse body of work, ranging from daytime television to film and theater, showcased his commitment to authenticity and his ability to portray complex characters with depth and sincerity. Though he may no longer be with us, his legacy as an actor and humanitarian continues to be remembered and celebrated. Comedian Tom Smothers, one half of the Smothers Brothers, dies at 86. The National Comedy Center, on behalf of his family, said in a statement, Wednesday that Smothers died Tuesday at home in Santa Rosa, California, following a cancer battle. Tom Smothers, born in 1937 in New York City, rose to prominence as one half of the renowned comedy duo, the Smothers Brothers, alongside his brother Dick. Their television variety show, The Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, debuted in 1967, blending folk music and humor while fearlessly tackling social and political issues. Despite its success, the show faced censorship battles, ultimately leading to its cancellation in 1969. Throughout his career, Smothers received multiple Emmy Awards for the show and a Grammy for Best Comedy Album. Beyond entertainment, he championed causes like environmental conservation and free speech. Smothers' personal life largely remained private, focused on family and pursuits like music and writing. His legacy as a comedic pioneer, unafraid to challenge conventions, endures. Smothers' influence on comedy and his advocacy work continue to inspire generations, leaving an indelible mark on the entertainment industry and beyond. Tom Smothers' passing marks the end of an era, but his laughter and legacy will resonate for years to come. Tom Wilkinson, actor in The Full Monty, dies at 75. Tom Wilkinson, an admired performer on the British stage who in middle age became a skillful character actor, 
and supporting star in a wide range of movies that gained popularity and acclaim in the United States, including The Full Monty, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and Shakespeare in Love, died on Saturday. He was 75. Tom Wilkinson, a celebrated British actor born in 1948, passed away, leaving behind a legacy of remarkable performances. Raised in a family with a passion for theater, Wilkinson's career began on stage before he transitioned to television and film. His breakthrough came with The Full Monty in 1997, propelling him to international recognition. Wilkinson's talent was evident in diverse roles from In the Bedroom to Michael Clayton, earning him Oscar nominations and numerous awards, including BAFTA and Golden Globe accolades. Despite his success, he remained private about his personal life, focusing on his craft. Known for his dedication and commitment to characters, Wilkinson's performances were characterized by depth and authenticity, resonating with audiences worldwide. Beyond acting, he displayed interests in literature, music, and art, reflecting his multifaceted persona. Tom Wilkinson's passing leaves a void in the entertainment world, but his contributions will be remembered fondly, inspiring future generations of performers. Parasite actor Lee Sun Kyun found dead in Seoul. Lee, 48, was found after his wife reported to police that he had left home, and she had found what appeared to be a suicide note, South Korean news agency Yonhap reported. Lee Sun Kyun, a beloved South Korean actor, born on March 2, 1975 in Seoul, showcased his remarkable talent across television dramas and films. Graduating from Hanyang University with a degree in theater and film, Lee embarked on a successful career, starting with his television debut in School 2, 1999. Renowned for his versatility, Lee delivered memorable performances in dramas like Pasta, 2010, and My Mister, 2018, as well as in films such as Paju, 2009, and A Hard Day, 2014. His skillful portrayals earned him prestigious awards, including Best Actor at the Blue Dragon Film Awards and Grand Bell Awards. Despite his public acclaim, Lee guarded his personal life, sharing it selectively. He married actress Jian Hai Jin, with whom he had two children, showcasing a strong bond. Paula Murphy, once the fastest woman on wheels, dies at the age of 95. Paula Murphy, a leading female car racer in an era when land speed records thrilled the American public, died on Thursday at an assisted living facility in Prescott, Ares. She was 95. Her death was confirmed by her son, Dan Murphy, who said her health had declined after she broke her femur in May. In memory of the late Paula Murphy, a revered race car driver born on April 10, 1985 in Chicago, Illinois, we reflect on her remarkable journey in motorsports. From a young age, Murphy's passion for racing was evident, leading her to excel in karting championships before transitioning to higher level series like Formula Ford and eventually earning a spot in the prestigious IndyCar series. Throughout her career, Murphy's exceptional driving skills and fearless approach on the track earned her numerous victories, podium finishes, and accolades, including IndyCar Series Rookie of the Year and various Drivers' Championships. Beyond her racing achievements, Murphy was known for her integrity, sportsmanship, and dedication to philanthropic causes. She cherished her family and friends, acknowledging their unwavering support throughout her career. Despite her untimely passing, Murphy's legacy as one of the sport's greats endures inspiring generations of aspiring race car drivers to chase their dreams with determination and perseverance. May her memory continue to live on in the hearts of motorsport enthusiasts worldwide. Laura Lynch, a founding member of the country music group The Dixie Chicks, died on Friday in a car crash in Texas. She was 65. The death was confirmed by Nicole Endres, a justice of the peace in the area.
Shecky Green, legendary Las Vegas headliner, dies at the age of 97. Hecky Green, the legendary Las Vegas headliner and stand-up comedian who entertained audiences for years while battling demons that included stage fright, alcoholism, prescription drug abuse, and gambling, died Sunday. He was 97. Green died on New Year's Eve of natural causes at his home in Las Vegas, his wife of 41 years. Marie Musso Green told the Las Vegas Review Journal, Shecky Green, born Fred Sheldon Greenfield, was a comedic legend known for his rapid-fire wit and improvisational style. Rising to prominence in the golden age of comedy, Green became a fixture in Las Vegas and earned widespread acclaim for his performances at prestigious venues like the Sands Hotel. Throughout his career, he received multiple Emmy Award nominations for his innovative and impactful contributions to comedy. Despite personal struggles, including battles with addiction, Green remained resilient, finding solace in making others laugh. Offstage, he was known for his down-to-earth demeanor and commitment to philanthropy, cherishing time with his family and actively supporting charitable causes. Green's legacy as one of the greatest comedians of his time lives on, inspiring aspiring entertainers worldwide. He passed away, leaving behind a legacy that continues to celebrate the transformative power of laughter and his enduring impact on the world of entertainment. Ana Ofelia Merguia, Mexican actress and voice in Coco, dies at the age of 90. Ana Ofelia Merguia, one of Mexico's most acclaimed actresses, whose voice acting as Mama Coco in the animated movie Coco brought her international recognition, died on Sunday. She was 90. Her death was confirmed by Mexico's National Institute of Fine Arts and its National Theatre Company, which did not say where she died. Ana Ofelia Murguia was a Mexican actress, celebrated for her remarkable contributions to film, television, and theater. Born on December 8, 1933 in Mexico City, Murguia's passion for acting blossomed early in her life, driving her to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. Over six decades, she showcased her talent in diverse roles, captivating audiences with her authenticity and depth. Murguia's career began on the stage, where she honed her skills and garnered recognition for her performances. Transitioning to cinema, she starred in numerous acclaimed films, collaborating with esteemed directors and earning praise for her portrayal of complex characters. Her versatility extended to television, where she became a familiar face in series and soap operas, captivating viewers with her charisma. Throughout her career, Murguia received numerous awards and accolades, affirming her status as a powerhouse in the entertainment world. Despite her public success, she maintained a private, personal life, focusing on her craft and using her platform for philanthropic endeavors. Beyond acting, Murguia's legacy includes advocacy for causes dear to her heart, leaving a lasting impact on her community. Her dedication to her artistry and her commitment to making a difference serve as inspirations to aspiring performers and admirers alike. Ana Ofelia Murguia's passing leaves a void in the world of Mexican entertainment, but her indelible mark as a talented actress and compassionate advocate ensures that her legacy will endure for generations to come. Les McCann, jazz pianist with a soulful holler, dies at the age of 88. McCann died on Deck 29, 2023, at a hospital in Los Angeles at 88, of pneumonia. Alan Abrahams, a veteran producer and record executive who served as his manager, confirmed his death, noting that McCann had lived at a nursing facility for the last four years. Les McCann, born in 1935 in Lexington, Kentucky, was a pivotal figure in jazz music. Growing up in a racially segregated society, he found solace in music, particularly jazz and gospel. Moving to Los Angeles in the 1960s, McCann quickly gained recognition for his innovative blend of jazz, soul, and funk. His debut album, Les McCann Latted, Plays the Shampoo, launched his prolific musical journey characterized by electrifying performances and soulful rhythms. A defining moment in McCann's career came with his 1969 album Swiss Movement, recorded live at the Montreux Jazz Festival. 
The album's track compared to what became a timeless anthem of social commentary, reflecting the tumultuous era of the civil rights movement. Throughout his career, McCann collaborated with legendary musicians, further solidifying his status as a jazz icon. McCann's contributions to music were celebrated with Grammy nominations and critical acclaim for his influential albums and performances. Beyond his musical endeavors, he was known for his advocacy for social justice, using his platform to speak out against racial discrimination and inequality. In his later years, McCann continued to inspire audiences with his music, performing around the world and sharing his gift with new generations of listeners. His legacy as a musician, activist, and humanitarian continues to shine brightly, leaving an indelible mark on the world of jazz and beyond. Trailblazing former repier Eddie Bernice Johnson, who served nearly 30 years in Congress, dies at 88. Eddie Bernice Johnson, who blazed a trail as a black woman in healthcare and government, first as a nurse in Dallas, then as the first black state senator from the city since Reconstruction, and then in 15 terms in the U.S. House of Representatives, died on Sunday. She was 89. Her death was confirmed by her son, Dorrance Kirk Johnson Sr., who did not say where she died. Eddie Bernice Johnson was born on December 3, 1935, in Waco, Texas, and grew up in a segregated society. Despite these challenges, she pursued education, earning a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from St. Mary's College. Johnson's early career focused on psychiatric nursing and education, reflecting her dedication to public service. In 1972, she began her political journey, serving in the Texas House of Representatives until 1977, and later as a member of the Texas Senate from 1987 to 1993. In 1992, she made history as the first registered nurse elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, representing Texas's 30th Congressional District. Throughout her tenure in Congress, Johnson prioritized healthcare reform, education, environmental protection, and scientific research. She served on the Committee on Science, Space, and Technology, becoming its first female and African-American chairperson. Johnson received numerous awards and honors for her advocacy, particularly in healthcare and environmental issues. Her personal life reflected her commitment to faith, community, and resilience against discrimination in politics. Despite facing challenges, Johnson remained dedicated to her constituents, family, and promoting health and wellness. Her legacy exemplifies integrity, resilience, and dedication to public service, inspiring generations of women and minorities in politics. Eddie Bernice Johnson's passing marks the end of an era but leaves behind a legacy of tireless advocacy and leadership that will continue to inspire future generations. Richard Romanus actor in Mean Streets, dies at the age of 80, Richard Romanus, the tough guy character actor best known for his turn as Michael Longo, the little Italy loan shark who gets into it with Robert De Niro's Johnny Savello and Martin Scorsese's Mean Streets, has died. He was 80. Romanus died decked to 23 in a private hospital in Volus, Greece. His son, Robert Romanus, told The Hollywood Reporter. In remembrance of Richard Romanus, we reflect on a life dedicated to the art of acting, spanning decades of captivating performances on screen and stage. Born on February 8, 1943, in Bara, Vermont, Romanus emerged from humble beginnings to become a respected figure in the entertainment industry. His career began in the late 1960s, marked by his debut in the crime drama series, The Outsider, which paved the way for a prolific journey in film, television, and theater. Notably, Romanus's portrayal of Michael in Martin Scorsese's Mean Streets, 1973, showcased his ability to embody complex characters with depth and authenticity. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, he exhibited remarkable versatility, seamlessly transitioning between genres and mediums. From gritty crime dramas to heartfelt family comedies, Romanus captivated audiences with his nuanced performances. While major awards may have eluded him, Romanus earned critical acclaim and a devoted fan base for his contributions to storytelling. Beyond the spotlight, he remained a private individual, valuing moments with loved ones away from the glamour of Hollywood. His commitment to authenticity both on and off screen underscored his approach to life and art. In his personal time, Romanus cherished his role as a family man, 
embodying the same sincerity and depth that characterized his performances. As we bid farewell to a talented actor and cherished individual, we honor Richard Romanus's legacy, defined by passion, dedication, and an enduring impact on the world of entertainment. Masashi Ozawa, best known to WWE and pro wrestling fans as Killer Khan, has died at the age of 76. WWE announced Ozawa's passing Saturday and remembered him for his multiple stints with the company in the 1980s. Maurice Hines, Broadway star and brother of fellow tap dancing legend Gregory Hines, has died. He was 80. Maurice died on Friday of natural causes at the Actors Fund home in Englewood, New Jersey, an assisted living facility where he lived in recent years, the home's executive director, Jordan Stroll, confirmed to People. In commemorating the life of Morris Hines, we honor a luminary whose journey through the world of dance left an indelible mark on the hearts of audiences worldwide. Born into the rhythm of New York City, Morris's early introduction to tap dance by his mother, Alma, sparked a lifelong passion for the art form. His career spanned decades, marked by electrifying performances on Broadway, film, and television, where he showcased his unique blend of elegance and exuberance. Maurice's collaborations with icons like Duke Ellington and his brother Gregory elevated him to legendary status in the realm of entertainment. His Tony Award-winning choreography in Uptown, It's Hot, stands as a testament to his creative genius and enduring impact on the performing arts. Beyond accolades, Maurice's personal life reflected a deep commitment to diversity and inclusion, advocating for representation within the industry and nurturing emerging talent. Yet amidst his professional success, Maurice remained grounded in gratitude for his upbringing and the unbreakable bond with his brother Gregory both on and off the stage. Their shared love for dance epitomized the transformative power of art to inspire and unite people from all walks of life. Maurice Hines' legacy continues to resonate, reminding us of the timeless allure of tap dance and the enduring spirit of creativity, passion, and artistry. He embodied Gil de Ferran, former Indy 500 winner and F1 sporting director, Dies aged 56, Gil de Ferran, the 2003 Indianapolis 500 winner and holder of the closed course land speed record, died Friday while racing with his son at the Concourse Club in Florida. Multiple former colleagues confirmed to the Associated Press. He was 56. Fellow Brazilian driver Tony Canayan said de Ferran was with his son Luke at the private course in Opalaca, Florida, when he pulled over and said he wasn't feeling well. Canayan said de Ferran apparently suffered a heart attack and could not be revived. In remembrance of Gil de Ferran, we honor a legendary figure whose illustrious career in motorsports left an indelible mark on the racing world. Born on November 11, 1967 in Paris, France, de Ferran grew up in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where his passion for racing was ignited. Rising through the ranks of karting, he showcased exceptional talent, eventually transitioning to open-wheel racing in the early 1990s. De Ferran's professional career soared as he dominated the kart series, securing consecutive championships in 2000 and 2001 with Team Penske. His prowess behind the wheel was further exemplified by his triumph at the prestigious Indianapolis 500 in 2003. Beyond his on-track success, de Ferran was renowned for his humility, intelligence, and fluency in multiple languages. Retiring from full-time racing in 2003, de Ferran remained a prominent figure in motorsports, serving as a team principal and mentor to emerging talents. His contributions to the sport were recognized with inductions into the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America in 2019 and the Brazilian Motorsport Hall of Fame. Off the track, de Ferran prioritized his family and engaged in philanthropic endeavors, supporting initiatives focused on nurturing young racing talent and promoting road safety awareness. Though he may have departed from this world, Gil de Ferran's legacy continues to inspire and resonate within the hearts of racing enthusiasts worldwide, leaving behind a lasting impact on the sport he loved dearly. Sandra Reeves Phillips, actress and singer on stage and screen, dies at the age of 79. Sandra Reeves Phillips, the actress and singer who appeared in the films Round Midnight and Lean on Me, and portrayed six legendary divas in a one-woman tour-de-force stage show, 
has died. She was 79. Reeves Phillips died Friday at her home in Queens, family spokesperson Sandra Landman told The Hollywood Reporter. She had been in failing health since falling off a stage during a performance of Raisin in St. Louis in 2004 and enduring serious auto accidents in 2014 and 15 in New York. In remembrance of Sandra Reeves Phillips, we reflect on the remarkable life of a multi-talented performer who left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Born on December 23, 1946 in Mullins, South Carolina, Sandra's journey towards greatness began in a musically inclined family, fostering her passion for performance from a young age. Throughout her career spanning theater, film, television, and music, Sandra's powerful and soulful voice stood as a testament to her dedication and hard work. She excelled in various genres, captivating audiences with her stunning vocal interpretations and magnetic stage presence. Notably, her performance in Broadway's The Late Great Ladies of Blues and Jazz, a tribute, garnered critical acclaim, earning her prestigious nominations for Tony and Drama Desk Awards. Beyond her professional achievements, Sandra was known for her advocacy for social causes, including racial equality, women's rights, and accessibility to the arts for underprivileged communities. Her commitment to making a positive difference in the world reflected her genuine spirit and compassion. Despite her busy career, Sandra cherished her personal life and the support of her loved ones. While often on the road performing or engaged in projects, she remained grounded in her roots and found solace in family and friends. In summary, Sandra Reeves Phillips leaves behind a legacy of talent, dedication, and compassion. Her contributions to the arts and advocacy for social justice will continue to inspire and resonate with audiences for generations to come. We honor her memory and celebrate the profound impact she made during her lifetime. Young lover in Robert Duaneau's Paris Kiss photograph dies age 93. In remembrance of Françoise Bournet, we honor a visionary photographer whose indelible mark on the art world is as enduring as her timeless images. Born on February 27, 1934, in France, Bournet's journey into photography began with a passion for capturing moments of beauty and spontaneity shaped by her upbringing in the picturesque landscapes of her homeland. At the tender age of 19, Bournet immortalized herself in history through the iconic Kiss by the Hôtel de Ville, a collaboration with Jacques-Henri Lartigue that captured the essence of romance and spontaneity, earning her widespread acclaim. Throughout her illustrious career, Bournet pushed the boundaries of her craft, exploring diverse themes with an unwavering commitment to authenticity and creativity. Her contributions to photography were celebrated with numerous awards and accolades, including the International Photography Award for Lifetime Achievement, solidifying her status as a trailblazer in the field. Despite her monumental success, Bournet remained humble and grounded, finding solace in nature and cherishing moments with her loved ones. Her warmth and generosity endeared her to many, leaving an indelible mark on all who had the privilege of knowing her. As we bid farewell to Françoise Bournet, her legacy lives on through her timeless images, which continue to inspire and captivate audiences around the world. Her profound impact on the art of photography serves as a reminder of the transformative power of creativity and the enduring beauty of the human spirit. Bongjani Ngema, playwright who extolled apartheid resistance, dies at 68 Mbongjani Ngema, a South African playwright who decried the injustices of white rule apartheid while also celebrating black culture and resilience in works including the Broadway hit, Sarafina, that later became a film starring Whoopi Goldberg, died District 27 following a car accident. He was 68. Mr. Ngema was riding in a car involved in a head-on collision in South Africa's Eastern Cape province. According to a family statement, he died at a hospital in Umbizana. In memory of Mumbongeni Ngema, a luminary of South African arts and activism, we reflect on the profound impact he left on both stage and society. Ungema, born in 1955 in Verulam, KwaZulu-Natal, emerged as a beacon of creative resistance during the apartheid era. His upbringing amidst racial segregation fueled his commitment to social justice, evident in his groundbreaking works that tackled themes of oppression and resilience. Gema's career soared with the monumental success of Sarafina, a powerful musical he wrote and directed, illuminating the Soweto Uprising of 1976.
Premiering in 1987, the production captivated global audiences, earning critical acclaim and cementing Njema's reputation as a visionary artist. Beyond theater, Njema ventured into filmmaking, producing poignant films that echoed the struggles and triumphs of the South African people. His contributions garnered widespread recognition, including Tony and Drama Desk Award nominations for Sarafina and a Na CP Image Award for his literary work. These accolades underscored Ngema's ability to blend storytelling with activism, sparking dialogue and fostering empathy across cultural divides. While Ngema's public persona centered on his artistic achievements, his personal life reflected a deep-seated commitment to social change. Rooted in empathy and shaped by his experiences, Ngema's legacy transcends the stage, resonating with audiences worldwide as a testament to the transformative power of art. As we honor Umbungani Ngema's memory, we celebrate his enduring legacy as a trailblazer, storyteller, and advocate for justice. His indomitable spirit lives on in the hearts of those inspired by his work, continuing to ignite conversations and inspire change long after his passing. Thank you for watching and being a part of our community. Joining us in remembering the iconic stars of American cinema and stars around the world.